two, one. Welcome, everybody. You're on Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. And today in the hot seat, I have a wonderful guest, Mr. Steve Bender, director of the iconic Elvis Comeback Special. We're going to talk about that and the new documentary that's out, Reinventing Elvis. It's all going to happen now. In the meantime, kids, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified so you don't miss any other episodes. Don't touch that dial. It all starts right now. By the late 1960s, Elvis had become irrelevant. He could see the music industry passing him by. I was hired to direct a TV special that would resurrect his once great career. It's a great American original finding himself again. All right, here we have him in the hot seat. Steve Binder, welcome, my friend. Pleasure Legendary. to be here. You created the MTV Unplugged for the generation before it, it even existed, doing this 68 comeback special with Elvis. It really was the, the template for MTV's Unplugged, as I see it. Yeah, I even uh, pitched it to MTV <laughs> and to VH1, I think was going at the time, and uh, a few other companies. And they all rejected me, and and uh, uh, and I found out later they just wanted to do it in house by themselves because it'd be a lot cheaper than going to the outside. That is funny. Uh, that that is funny. So I I was got to see reinventing Elvis, and let me tell you what a fabulous behind the scenes story. One thing I did love about it was the girls. The bordello scene, like you had the girls in there talking. I was always curious, what do they look like now? What what are their thoughts now? And you guys put it in the doc, which I thought, thought great. Was- well, John Scheinfeld, who directed it, just did a wonderful job. When they first came to me, uh, you know, my partner uh, Spencer Proffer, uh, who really there'd have been no no real book without Spencer. He's the one who really said, you realize how important this Elvis story is, don't you? And the truth of the matter is, you know, I remember about 30 years ago, somebody coming up to me and saying, no matter what shows you do, uh, you know, the one show you'll always be remembered for is the Elvis comeback special. And I laughed at the time thinking, you know, he didn't know what he was talking about, but it's, it's come to fruition. It's absolutely true. It is. Well, that the comeback special, it made a couple of comebacks. I don't know if people know watching this because also Elvis one night with you was on VHS. I remember. Those were strictly, well, this is a funny story. Uh, RCA records and the Elvis Presley estate were evidently in a big feud when Elvis passed on. And uh, so RCA took the position that if the Elvis Presley estate did any Elvis projects, uh, they would not license them the publishing rights to use any of the Elvis catalog. So uh, I, at the time, uh, with a brilliant cinematographer, very famous one, Laszlo Kovacs. Uh, we went back to Graceland, uh, where Priscilla hosted kind of uh, a tour of Graceland and uh, from Elvis's point of view. And uh, I, I was really at, at uh, the stage where, you know, be- My whole experience with Elvis from beginning to end was about five months maximum. I didn't know him before I started the special. I didn't know him or talk to him Uh, after the special. We never, ever communicated. Once through my musical director on the comeback special, Billy Goldenberg, who went on to do Change of Habit with Elvis, uh, with Mary Tyler Moore, uh, he used to call me from the stage and say, Elvis is uh, curious how you're doing, Steve, and he wants to make sure you, you're okay, et cetera. And, and that lasted for, uh, you know, the time that Billy was working on, on the movie with Elvis. And then after that, I never, ever uh, had any communication with him. I was definitely persona non grata when it came to, uh, you know, getting in the colonel's way and so forth. But 
when I was approached by John Scheinfeld and, and uh, Spencer Proffer uh, saying, we want to do a documentary on your buddy experience with Elvis, uh, I said, haven't they done enough? I mean, you've got Baz Luhrmann's movie, which was such a big hit. You've had a zillion books written on the 68 special. Uh, even though all of them are third party, just, you know, they, they heard stories from other people. Uh, and uh, I don't, I just don't want to do another Elvis project that's similar or the same as all the other ones. And uh, they said, well, why don't you give us a chance to at least pitch it to you? And they sat down and they laid it out. And uh, I said, guys, uh, Count me in. It sounds like you're taking a whole other direction. And as long as it's honest, as long as there's nothing in there that we're taking literary license, uh, it's amazing how so many projects, the uh, producers or directors say, you know, uh, we're, we're going to do things that never really happened. And I said, you know, you can't do that. And uh, even in Baz's movie, and I understand, uh, you know, he's making an entertainment feature, but I was never at the Hollywood sign. I never smoked a cigarette in my life. Uh, you know, uh, so there were things in that. Elvis didn't, uh, in front of a live audience, fire the colonel, things like that, which directors do all the time when it comes to embellishing their dramatic story that they're telling. Uh, but I, if we're doing a documentary, it has to be 100% honest. And at least from my point of view, it has to be exactly as I tell it and how I saw it and experienced it. I don't want to make things up. I don't want to, you know, change history in any way, shape or form. I'm just, you know, I'll answer all your questions. I'll get involved. But uh, I just want you to know that, you know, if, if I object to anything, it's because it never really happened and I don't want it in the show. And they promised me uh, that they would follow that direction and they did. And I, I think it really, uh, there wasn't one uh, book uh, written that was written by anybody who was there from the very beginning to the end. And uh, you know, my little, uh, family that I had put together, uh, you know, there was nobody even on my staff from the Elvis Presley estate. Uh, when I asked Elvis, is there anybody uh, that you want on the show uh, from your own world, etc.? Because, you know, my team is totally together. We just did Petula Clark and Harry Belafonte. We did Leslie Uggams, etc. And we're a well-oiled machine, so you're going to join us. We're not going to, yeah. I'm not going to come work for, for you. And he said, yeah, there's one person. And I said, who's that? And he said, Billy Strange. I want him to be my musical director. Little did I know at the time, uh, even though from day one I wanted Billy Goldenberg because I'd worked with Billy on Hullabaloo. I'd worked with him on Petula Clark. I mean, Billy was my guy. And uh, so it was a case of where I said, okay, Elvis, if that's what you want, that's what I'll do. And I called Billy Strange and we had a nice conversation. I said, Elvis is coming in in about uh, two or three weeks and he's gonna start rehearsals, learning all the material, but we're gonna do it at my offices on Sunset Boulevard, not at NBC. And he said, no problem. And as we got closer and closer to the date, uh, there wasn't one lead sheet or one piece of music from Billy Strange that he turned in. Little did I know, he had just come off a hit record producing Nancy Sinatra, These Boots Are Made For Walking. And the record company was screaming at Billy, we need an album, you gotta do another nine or 10 songs. So Billy was totally wrapped up in Nancy and I said, Billy, you know, you should have leveled with me and told me from day one that you're tied up with Nancy. Uh, but if I don't have any music to rehearse Elvis uh, next Monday morning at nine o'clock, 
just be aware you're fired. And Billy said, you can't fire me. And I said, why? He said, because I know Elvis a hell of a lot better than you do. And I'm sure Elvis is going to insist that I be the musical director on the show. And uh, I said, well, then, then uh, it, you know, he'll fire me. But we're both not going to be here uh, when we start rehearsals with Elvis because I need somebody who's going to make a full 100% commitment. So uh, Monday morning came around, no lead sheet, no music. I, I called Bob Finkel, my executive producer, mm -hmm. and I said, Bob, uh, uh, I'm firing Billy Strange. And I explained to him what the situation was. And he said, well, I don't know. Uh, what reaction we'll get from Colonel Parker, but uh, we got to tell him. So uh, I called uh, Parker and uh, I told him that I had fired Billy Strange. I was bringing my guy in from New York. And he said, Elvis is not going to come to work the next day. You've gone too far. He wants Billy Strange. And I said, well, the, uh, the bottom line is that you're not going to have Steve Bender if you have Billy Strange. So you have to make that decision. Elvis showed up the next morning, uh, asked me what happened. I explained to him, took two minutes, and he, he never mentioned it again. He said, fine. Now my problem is I called Billy Goldberg, Goldenberg in New York, and uh, I said, Billy, stop everything you're doing. Uh, I'll pay for your airplane ticket, but you got to get on a plane right now and come to LA and be the musical director for the Elvis Presley special. Billy said, Steve, you know, uh, we have a great working relationship. We're good friends, but I can't do it. And I said, what do you mean you can't do it? And he said, you know, I'm a Jewish kid from New York and I'm into Broadway and, and now television but I'm not into conducting blue suede shoes or uh, uh, any of, of the Elvis material. And I said, Billy, uh, I'm on my hands and knees here. I, I desperately need you. You've got to come to L.A. And thank God he got on an airplane and came out and the rest is history. That's all we have time for today. I want to thank Steve Binder for joining us and sharing his insights on the legendary Elvis 68 comeback special. Make sure you check out Reinventing Elvis, the 68 comeback. Links will be down below. Also, you could become a member right now and watch this interview unedited just hit that join button but in the meantime we will be releasing more clips of our conversation with steve so make sure you subscribe hit the bell to be notified you don't miss that and put your comments down below remember who loves your baby we do we'll catch you all later Mwah.